Welcome back to my dark room. Today we are going to be developing E6 by hand. So if you want to shoot some slide film and process with E6, that's what we're going to do. Now, of course, your chemical and film options are a lot more limited. Fuji has discontinued Velvia 100. There's still limited sizes in Velvia 50. And of course, the Provia 100F. And then there's Kodak Ektar 100. Right now, those are the only two current, uh, or a two and a half, currently made uh, positive color films. The kits, we'll talk about those in a minute. I'm using the Arista 3-bath kit that I picked up when I was in Chicago uh, a couple months ago. And I shot a roll of Kodak Ektar 100, um, 120, so medium format. And uh, and that's really it. So we got everything starting over here. Got the film already loaded up in the tank. So let's hop over there and go through the steps. Here we have everything set up. I've got my first developer, second color developer, and my Blix. And then I've got my tank. Uh, I have everything here set up for 105 degrees Fahrenheit and we're ready to go. Since this is the three bath kit, we do have a few differences between a six bath kit, which you would find from Fuji Hunt, if you can still find them in small quantities. Uh, they are discontinued and you can only get large quantities. You can't get anything from Kodak. Uh, everything else is going to be three bath. I believe Bellini is still a six bath, but I have not found a supplier in the US. So, three bath kit. Uh, a six bath would have a uh, first developer, which develops the black and white image, a color reversal bath, which um, activates or chemically fogs the remaining silver halide. The color developer, which then forms the dye for that second chemical exposure. Then you have a bleach, a fix, and then a stabilizer. Here with the three bath, we have the first developer. The reversal bath and color developer are combined and the bleach and fix are combined into a Blix. There is no stabilizer. So I'm gonna be using PhotoFlow just for watermarks. And it's very straight, uh, very, blah, blah. it's a fairly straightforward process. Uh, there will be some washing steps because I've got my video lights in the sink. I will not be doing those steps on camera uh, simply because I don't want to electrocute myself. So for those of you who wanted to see me go to the hospital today, uh, you are going to be sadly disappointed. So let's go ahead and get this going. First thing we're going to do is a water pre-bath. So let's fill this up. And I do have everything to temperature, even my faucet. So if I did not have my faucet to temperature, I would need a bottle of water in here to do so. So this is just going to be a pre-soak. I'll just add shade a little bit to make sure bubbles aren't on there. And we'll just give that about 30 seconds or so, and then we'll get rid of it. And then we'll have our first developer. At this temperature, our first developer will be six and a half minutes. So I have it set up right there. Okay, pre-rinse is out, first developer is in. Now, as you know, I tend to do a lot of stuff as Kodak recommends. In this case, Arista and Kodak's uh, technique is the same for hand inversion. It says to agitate seven or eight times or invert seven to eight times within the first 15 seconds and then two to three times every 30 seconds after that. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. That is both um, Arista's and Codex. And we're just gonna continue this for the six and a half minutes. I'm not gonna make you sit there and watch um, and I don't have a whole lot to say as I do it. So let's uh, skip on forward and you will see 
the end of this development. So as we get close to the time here, I'm going to go ahead and get prepped to pour it out. This particular tank doesn't take very long to dump out, so about five seconds left. I'll pour it back into my container so I can bottle it because this is good for another two or three rolls. I'm doing medium format today. And I believe the one pint kit is good for four rolls of 120. All right. Seven fill and dumps, which I'll start here and then move to my bathroom sink so I don't shock myself. All right, after those fill and dumps, we're ready for the color developer, which is four and a half minutes at this temperature. So let's do that step. You will find that the solutions change color over time or use. The second developer was purple when I first mixed it and overnight it turned honey colored or brown. The first developer did the opposite. Started honey or straw colored. Yeah, I guess a straw color. And then turned a pink after the first roll. <laughs> Blix is Blix. It's going to stay that color the whole time. Okay, same agitation cycle. First 15 seconds, you wanna give seven to eight inversions and then two to three every 30 seconds after that. So this step, we are chemically fogging the undeveloped silver and then developing that at the same time in order to create the dye from the dye couplers in the developer. All right, we'll see you back when this step is complete. Quick plug, if you're making a mess in your darkroom, a naked photographer lab towel is a great way to clean it up. Links are down in the description. They are microfiber, easy to clean, easy to use, and they actually dry things. Not like some of the microfibers I've tried out there. Okay, second developer done. And we're going to give it another seven fill and dump wash. So I'm going to fill it with water here. And again, I'm going to skip over to my bathroom, the sink there, and complete them so I don't electrocute myself on camera. Okay, with those done, we're gonna set our timer for 10 minutes and do our blick step. This will simultaneously bleach the silver out and fix it to a light stable form. You can do this with the room lights on or the lid off if you like after the second developer because there's no more silver to uh, develop at that point. And again, same agitation cycle. Now that it's almost done, go ahead and pour that out. And at this point, we can do a running water wash for five minutes. I'm gonna get it full of water at the moment with the blicks still all over it. And then I'll show you my washer so I, um, I, don't, I didn't want to spend the money on one of Jobo's forced turbulence washers. So I got this, which is just a piece of stainless steel tubing from a model train store. Um, I cut it to length. And then I got a rubber stopper from a hardware store, drilled a hole through it, which wasn't all that hard, shoved the rod right through the middle. And then I just put it on my rubber hose, which I need to replace the rubber hose, it's getting a little hard. And that's it, I've got a forced air washer now. The stopper will fit into the Jobo tank, 
and then force water down and uh, and wash it. And it was a lot cheaper than buying Jobo's thing. So I'm gonna take this um, over to the drain where you can't see me and I'm away from the electronics and wash this for five minutes in running water. And then we'll open this up and take a look at the film and do the photo flow outside of the Jobo tank because I don't like putting photo flow in this. So let's do a quick wash and be right back. Okay, we've got the film washed. I can go ahead and turn this off so I don't run it down. Uh, and we're just gonna do the, the final steps, photo flow. So let's go ahead and just get these kind of out of the way. I've got my photo flow step here. And here we go. So the color looks very blue. That is perfectly normal. And on the back, it'll look very yellow. Don't worry about that. While it's wet, it's going to do that. Um, in fact, you'll know it's dry when all that yellow is gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the core out. Yes, this is a, a metal reel. It's a Hughes reel made for Jobo and Patterson tanks. So it's got a bigger core. Uh, I just don't like the plastic reels, so I got this. It's a little expensive, but I got it from Freestyle. Okay. All right, we'll let that sit for a minute. Uh, while it does, let's go ahead and just put everything back in their bottles so they don't get dripped on with photo flow. Let me find my funnel. And this is just part of cleanup. So we'll go ahead and take care of this real quick. And I'm not doing a very good job of keeping it from bubbling up. Normally I would try to get it to run down the side of the bottle so it doesn't foam. Clearly I'm not doing that very well today. I'm just gonna rinse in here. And that is it. So now at this point we can uh, go ahead and hang this up to dry and then get them scanned.